Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a big roll up of footage. It's going to start off with the competition footage from Oklahoma's Strongest Man. And then it's going to go into what can be some of my favorite weeks, which is the Anarchy Weeks. Coming at you from the couch, I just had my vasectomy surgery and so I'm just icing the boys, chilling out and going through old footage and decided that it's been a long time since I put up a video. So please enjoy the footage. I'll be breaking down all of the competition footage to let you guys know. I definitely had some lessons learned. Uh, unfortunately, it just happened the hard way. So enjoy the movie, and I'll see you guys intermittently. All right, so that's the deadlift. Really nothing learned from the deadlift other than I need to get better at deadlifting. There were three actual attempts. I hit all three attempts and got a down command on all three of them, so I got credit for all the reps. That was just two of the recordings. I don't know where the third one went, but I ended up getting up to 495. Now, some frustrating parts is I probably could have done 515, but I wanted to make sure I got my highest possible potential that day that I knew I had if that makes sense. So in Strongman, you got to be a little bit strategic about how you pick your weights. I knew that I had like, we'll call it a 75% chance of getting 495 without issue. And so I did 495. I started with 435. It was 20 pound jumps. So 435, 455. And then I skipped 40 and did 495. So Kurt. So the clean and press went actually really well. My one rep max right now it was 230 pounds. I ended up opening at 215 because I knew I could get 195 no problem. Again, it was 20 pound jumps, really big jumps in my opinion for an overhead movement, especially for a 200 pounder, 200 pound middleweight man. Uh, but we, yeah, we, so we hit uh, 215 and then I hit 235 and I went to go do 255, but in case uh, you haven't been following the channel for long, I actually uh, am due for some shoulder surgery coming up on my right hand side. So instead of pushing it, I decided just to hold at uh, 235. So I just cleaned, or I, I went to a attempt cleaning 255 and my coach was yelling at me to drop it. So I just did what I was told, like a good little trainee guy. <laughs> So sandbag over bar. I was really looking forward to this event. I thought it was going to be an amazing event. It was supposed to be 50 pounds, a 50 pound bag over a 12 foot bar. The bar was 12 feet. There was a 50 pound bag. And during warm ups, that's what I had, trained, uh, I had warmed up to was a 50 pound throw over the 12 footer. And I was getting all sorts of excited because watching the other middle mate went middle. Wow. Talking. Watching the other middleweight men, 200 pound class guys warm up, none of them were getting the 50 pound bag over the bar. Then, last minute, and I'm guessing it was to make up time because the show probably could have been run a little bit more efficiently, they decided to just run the middleweight men 231s, or two, yeah, 231s. They ran on the 50 pound bag, and then the middleweight men 200s ran on the 40 pound bag. I knew I could get the 50, I also knew I'd get the 40, and so I transitioned quickly from just trying to throw it as hard as I could to trying to throw it just barely high enough to clear the bar. My idea was I didn't want to run at all. During warm-ups, I found that running on the polished concrete was incredibly slippery, and I just wanted to be able to walk up to the bag and throw it back over the bar. So I was just trying to barely make it over the bar every time. Truth be told, I am kind of frustrated because this was going to be an event where I had the advantage to make up six points. 
Uh, but because they switched back to a 40 pound bag, almost everybody was able to clear the bar, which is good. I appreciate some healthy competition, but at the same time, selfishly, uh, knowing that I would have been able to clear the 50 pound bag over the bar easily kind of got me frustrated uh, because I saw it as a six point advantage that I should have had just in that event. Two, three, four, go. Come on, Kurt. Come on, Kurt. Come on, Kurt. Let's go, Kurt. Pick it up. Let's go. Good pick. Come on. Come on, Kurt. Quick step. Come on. Quick step. Come on, Kurt. Come on, Kurt. least definitely the most scary was the medley now the medley was originally advertised as a three-part medley it was going to be a duck walk down and then it was supposed to be a Husafel carry back and then a Husafel cross or an H cross or some sort of Titan fitness piece of crap equipment carried on the way back again uh, they ended up modifying it the day of competition and it was just a duck walk down followed by the Husafel carry back. But again, polished concrete floor. And then there were some, some dangerous situations. They wanted us to gently place a 250 pound, I think. I don't remember the weight, it's heavy. 250 pound Husafel stone. They wanted us to like put it down like super nicely and not drop it. And the Titan Fitness piece of crap equipment that it is, it has no retention for the actual weight plates. So what they were saying is if you dropped it and your weights fell out, that you had to pick up all the weights, upright the stone, and put all the weights back in before your time actually stopped. So first off, if I'm paying $80 a ticket for my entry ticket into a competition, I do fully expect there to be quality pieces of equipment in place. I don't really care, opinions to the contrary. I just think that if you're gonna run a competition, the word Titan should probably not be embossed across the front of your equipment because they make crap equipment and it's dangerous. You can comment down below if you disagree. Uh, second off, you're supposed to drop the Husafel. Like almost every single Husafel, you're supposed to drop it. If you are supposed to place it, you at least have some assistance. So my coach was able to, we'll call it liaise with the, uh, the coordinator for the competition, and we were able to just place it on the box at the end. And after the duck walk and then the Husafel back, it was good to go. The duck walk implement was way bigger than I trained with. I had a drop. Uh, and you can see in the video, my thigh actually caught the plastic end cap that was like in the tube and sent it flying across the floor. Uh, and I'm guessing that's what made me drop. I didn't notice that that had happened. But either way, I think I came in third on that event. There was just some, some quality competition on that one. Uh, I should have just moved quicker, what it comes down to. All right, so we're coming off of competition footage and going over to some training footage. So this is Anarchy Week, so it's basically my opportunity to do all the stuff that I don't normally get to do. Uh, to be honest, just kind of taking it easy a lot and just messing around. Like, so this Monday, I really just wanted to play with the trolley arms. And so I did as much trolley arm awesomeness that I could really think of doing to include these super heavy presses or jammer presses or whatever these are. They were just fun. Not going for any sort of form here, just messing around. I want to say you got like 180 pounds added per side though, which limiting factor very quickly becomes my grip on the floor, as you can see here. These are a lot of fun. If you don't have jammer arms or trolley arms or whatever movable arms, then you're, you're really missing out, but I also do understand that they're expensive as hell. Let's move on to day two of the training week, and I wanted to hit a PR squat uh, over the course of the two weeks that I had on Anarchy Week. 
uh, but I just didn't have it in the cards this day. So what I ended up doing was some chains work and I'm switching up how I attach the chains to the barbell. I'm using a, like a lead climber type thing. So that's 315 plus I think 85 in chains. Move on to the next day. And I decided to do some push pressing, but I wanted to use my trap bar because I've always seen people do trap bar pressing, but never trap bar push pressing. Just felt like giving it a try. Felt pretty nice not having to move my head around the weight, although I do feel like I naturally was just kind of moving my head around to the center of mass because that's what I'm used to. And then after that, I just went outside and I grabbed my 190 pound stone and I just wanted to rock out some stone to shoulder because it's been a long time and I know I got stones coming up in uh, at least one of the competitions that I've got lined up in the future. So funny story about this stone, it's the second stone that I ever made and it's slowly falling apart. It has a foam ball on the inside of it and if you do a foam ball on the inside of a stone make sure you get it better centered than I had it because that's why it's breaking, is that's the foam ball that's so close to the surface on the other side. Now we move on to Strongman Saturday. Work on some circus dumbbell, and I ended up going up to, to 125. Now, those 125 reps felt really good. And at that point, my daughter needed some attention, so I went inside. Uh, to see how she was doing, and I ended up bringing her back out with me. The nice part about having her out there with me is that she doesn't care if I complete the rep or not, she's excited. Alright, then we move on to some stones. So I believe this is the 260-ish pound stone. I actually haven't weighed it yet. And just running through the motions, just trying to get used to stones again. It's been a long time. I am using tacky in these videos, which is why I changed clothes. But again, the stones just seem to be coming right back to me. I'm also using the Music Metalworks stone table, which is working really freaking awesome. It's really nice to have a yoke that I can just pick up rather than having to go over my cross member and have to chase it every single time. So just a bunch of 285. I did give the, uh, I have a new 20 inch stone that's just pure concrete. Should weigh about 330. Again, I haven't weighed it yet. I did give it a go, but was definitely unsuccessful. So move on to the next day. I don't know which day this is. This is just another day of Anarchy Week. I needed a pick-me-up because I was failing all my PRs, and so I did that 540-pound raised hex bar, or trap bar deadlift. And then I messaged a really good buddy of mine, and I was like, hey, man, it's Anarchy Week. I have no plan. What should I do? And he, being the gentleman he is, he recommended that I do four sets of 12 at 275 of these stiffish leg deadlifts, which... Is a terrible idea, but thank you, Robert. I appreciate your advice. And I definitely did them all. Felt it the next day, for sure. Speaking of the next day, here's some push pressing with the Swiss bar. It's Anarchy Week, so anything goes. I believe that's 192.5. And then we decided that we were going to have some fun with the yoke. So this is a probably... 400 foot total, nah, it's probably 300 feet total yoke run. Don't actually know. Basically, we just went all the way down the street, dropped it when the pavement changed, 
and then turned and came back. And if memory serves, that's 360 pounds on the yoke. The way back was way more terrible than the way there. But as you can see, my feet start to narrow again, so I try to cue them back out. Got to work on that mental cue a lot. Oh, so that's 450, not 360. And then I wanted to uh, hit a PR. My current PR on yoke is 650. And so this is 670 unbroken for 50 feet. Clearly, there's more in the tank than what's here, which is good. So I'm going to continue to have this move up. I really just need to work on my yoke. It used to be something I prided myself on, but I got to work on it. After yoke, we just left it in place and started doing these arm over arm pulls. And we ended up working up to some ridiculous weights. I want to say it was like 400 some pounds, including sled weight. Uh, but it was getting really dark. And so most of the footage that I even tried to take, you couldn't tell what was what. If you check my Instagram, you can actually see some of the other footage. So after you pull the sled towards you, you push it all the way back, even with the 450 pounds. Move on to the next day and just uh, did some Viking press because it's been a long time. And these actually went really well. I tried to go for a, uh, a big number on these and I ended up working pretty heavy, but it definitely wasn't that impressive. And then I took the dead sled out for a couple runs. So we did some runs uh, to as heavy as we could. I don't actually know the weight on this off the top of my head, but I broke it down like it was at the 2016, 17 Arnold amateur. So at that amateur, you had to run with it, do two deadlifts, and then drop it at the end. And then we just worked up to a heavy dead deadlift, and I want to say that was 570, and then finished it all off with some stones. So this is my 220 pound stone, or I'm sorry, 235 pound stone. And we're only going up 42 inches. We were training with one of our female athletes and her contest height is 42 inches. And so I thought what a great opportunity to one, introduce her brother who's standing there in the red shirt to stones. And two, uh, go for that big mamma jamma, that new 20 incher that I've got. So there's 220. This one is not measured, but I'm guessing around 290. It is a 20 inch stone, but it has a foam ball suspended in the middle of it. So I'm guessing it's right at 300, 290, somewhere in that range. I need to weigh it. Went up there pretty easy. And I did try, this might be the heavy one. Is this the heavy one? Yep. Not going. So I appreciate if you stuck with the video this far. That is it. So that's a competition training plus two weeks of anarchy training in the books. Got third place in the comp. I expect way better from myself, and uh, we'll see what happens next time I get out in the field. Should be the next competition I have is the Sam Hain, which is here in Wichita Falls. Uh, get on Facebook, find it, or follow me on social medias, and I'll make it easy to find. Uh, but definitely come out. That is going to benefit the EOD Warrior Foundation, which is a foundation that's near and dear to my heart. After that is Texoma, which is United States Strongman Show. So the uh, competing is a 198, I believe, is the weight class I'm going for. Only need to cut down a couple pounds. I legitimately lost about 10 pounds, 10 to 15 pounds to compete in Oklahoma's and I think I'm just going to stay at that 200 pound weight class. It seems like a very competitive weight class. There's a really big group of strong people in it. Uh, but I just, I feel better. I look better as a 200 pounder. Eventually I'd like to get heavier, but I'm not there yet. Still got to work on that strength. But I appreciate you tuning in. If you don't mind, uh, go ahead and hit that like button. Give me a subscribe or no, it's a thumbs up button. Thumbs up button. Go ahead and thumbs up this video, uh, subscribe, and hit the little bell so that you get notifications. As well as that, if you click over here, you can subscribe to my channel. Or if you click one of these two videos over here, you can 
watch either my training playlist, which will be on the bottom, or just some random video that YouTube thinks you should watch. So, see you next time.